إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Indeed, all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His assistance, and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our own souls and from the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide this individual. And whomsoever Allah jalla wa ala leads to go astray, then nobody will be able to guide this individual. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is his slave and his final messenger, alayhi salatu salam. To proceed, in the, indeed the best speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The worst of all of the affairs in this religion are the newly invented matters. For indeed, every newly invented matter is an innovation. Every innovation is misguidance. And every misguidance is in the fire of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has told us in the Qur'an, what happened when He created Adam alayhi salatu salam, and then He ordered the angels to prostrate. And Iblis was counted from amongst the angels because he was a pious worshipper of Allah at that time. And Allah Jalla wa Ala, He mentions in various places in the Qur'an. For example, in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says, قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ تِسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ لَمْ يَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ We said to the angels, prostrate. And they all prostrated themselves, except for Iblis. He was not of those who prostrated themselves. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Iblis, O oh Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating to him when I commanded you? And in another ayah, O oh Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating to the one who I created with my own two hands? What did Iblis reply? قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَّارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ He said, I'm better than him. O oh Allah, although you've given me a direct command, I am better than him. You created me from the fire and you created him from the clay. So he used his own intellect and he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah jalla wa ala, as he mentions in Surah Al-Hijr, he told Iblis, قَالَ فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رجيم. Get out from here, for you are the one who is expelled. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ لَعْنَةَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينَ And indeed, upon you is the curse, upon you is my curse, until يَوْمُ Qiyamah. So Iblis said, Oh Allah, Give me respite, let me live, keep me alive until the day that they are resurrected. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Okay, you are from those who will be kept alive until Yawm al Qiyamah. And Iblis then he said, He said, Oh Allah, because you have sent me astray, because you have put your curse upon me, I'm going to come to them and I'm going to wait for them on your straight path. When they are on your straight path, Allah, I'm going to wait for them. And I'm going to wait for them, and I'm going to mislead them. And Iblis then he said, ثم لآتينهم من بين أيديهم ومن خلفهم وعن أيمانهم وعن شمائلهم Then I'm going to come to them from in front of them. I'm going to come to them from behind them. I'm going to come to them from their right sides. And I'm going to come to them from their left sides. And Iblis has mentioned as well, he says as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates, he said, O oh my Lord, because... You have put me in error. I'm going to make disobedience attractive to them. And I'm going to mislead them all. Except for your pious slaves, your sincere slaves from amongst them. So ya ikhwan, from here, 
from here, this was the beginning of Tawheed, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala versus shirk. This was the battle of obedience to Allah. This is when that battle began. Obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala versus shaitan and obedience to him and him trying to get us to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in so many places of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Iblis, shaitan and his followers, they are our open enemies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ Don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. Don't follow these whispers and these invitations and these uh, footsteps of shaitan. Indeed, he is to you an open enemy. And elsewhere in Surah Fatir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًا Indeed, Shaytan, Iblis, he is an open enemy to you. So take him as your enemy. Don't take him as a protector. Don't take him as a helper. Don't take him as an ally. Take him as your open enemy. He's going to come to you and make disobedience attractive to you. When you're on the straight path, when you're on that path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you're on that path towards Jannah, shaitan is going to come to you from all of the angles. And he's going to try and mislead you from the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he has said this, this is his mission. He mentioned this when he was kicked out from Jannah. And he disobeyed Allah. He said, oh Allah, I'm going to take as many of them as possible with me to the fire of Jahannam. And I'm going to make disobedience attractive to them. And ya ikhwan, because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophets and the messengers. Because of this, Allah jalla wa ala dispatched people from amongst our own selves to call us to the worship of Allah. They came at different times. They came at different places. But their message was one. Their message was a message of tawheed. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and don't associate any partners with Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ And we sent to every single nation a messenger saying, Worship Allah and do not worship the Taghut. Stay away from Taghut. And Taghut is anything that is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ I have not sent any messenger before you except that we reveal to him no, there is no God except for us, no, no deity worthy of worship except for me, so worship me. Ya Ikhwan, this is so important. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That we did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me alone. I did not create jinn and mankind except to worship me alone. And ya ikhwan, these prophets and messengers, they didn't just come with a message of tawheed, but they warned the people against shirk. They warned the people, stay away from associating partners with Allah. As the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he warned us, as is in this Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Indeed, Allah does, not work, Allah does not forgive the one who associates partners with him. But he forgives what is less than that. He forgives what is less than that for whomsoever he wills. And who, he who uh, associates partners with Allah, he has gone far astray. More than this, ya ikhwan. More than this, for the person who commits shirk and he dies upon shirk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made jannah haram for that person. Regardless of what he did, regardless of what his name was, regardless of how many times he said La ilaha illallah, but if he died upon shirk, if he died upon an aqidah, other than the aqidah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions and those earliest generations, he is going to be from the people of the hellfire. And Jannah is going to be haram for him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ Indeed, he who associates, partners with Allah, he who commits shirk with Allah, then Allah has made Jannah 
haram for him and his resting place is going to be in the fire of Jahannam. So ya ikhwan, the ultimate aim of shaitan, the ultimate aim of iblis is to come and try and make us commit shirk. He knows that if he can get one of us to die upon shirk, then this is another person who has gone to the fire of hell. This is his aim. This is his objective. This is the number one goal that Iblis is going to come with each and every single one of us. He's going to try and make us fall into shirk. Knowingly or unknowingly, he's going to try and make us associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like he came to the people of Nuh alayhi salam. Those people, there were some pious people amongst them. And so he came to the first generation of them. And he began to whisper and said, make pictures and make statues of these people. After their death, when they are dead, you're going to look at these statues, it's going to remind you of Allah. You're going to remember how pious these people were. Then you're going to worship Allah. So they did that. They made these pictures and they made these images of these pious people. And their intention was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when that generation died, he came to them and said, Did you know that your forefathers used to worship these idols? And then those people began worshipping those idols. And this was how shirk was introduced into mankind. And this is another proof and another evidence against innovation. Those in initial people, they tried to worship Allah with a way that he had not legislated. So they innovated and eventually shirk was introduced into mankind. So when Nuh alayhi salam, he went to his people and he said, worship Allah, stay away from Taghut. What did they say? They said, don't go from your, don't leave your gods. Don't leave Wad and Su'aq and Yaghuth and Nasr, don't leave them. Stay in the worship of these gods. Stay in the worship of those whom your forefathers used to worship. Likewise, he made uh, the people of uh, Ibrahim, when Ibrahim alayhi salam, when his people were out, on the edges of the town, Ibrahim alayhi salam came to the, the room full of idols and he destroyed all of the idols. And he left the biggest of the idols. And the people, they came back and said, who has done this to our gods? Who has done this to our gods? And then they said there was a man who was talking about them and he told us that he's going to do this. His name is Ibrahim. So they summoned Ibrahim alayhi salam and they said to him, what have you done? Did you do this to our idols? Ibrahim alayhi salam said, look, the biggest one of them is still alive. He's still standing. Ask him if he can help you. Ask him if he can speak to you. Then the people, they began to think, you know what? We've been wrongdoers. But then Iblis, he came to them and he said to them, look, Burn him and defend your gods. So then they built a fire and they threw Ib Ibrahim alayhi salam into that fire. Who was the one that was calling them to this? It was Iblis ya ikhwan. What about Fir'aun and his people? Fir'aun was the one. فَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى He said, I am the Lord the Most High. And his people used to worship him. Why? Because Iblis, he had made the shirk fair seeming. He had made it attractive to them. They thought that they were doing something good. Likewise, at the time of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the pagans of Quraysh, what did they do? They used to make dua to the graves, just like the people do today. They used to go to the graves and make dua to the dead people and say, these are our intercessors with Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَا أَمَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَا إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى Those who take protectors and helpers besides Allah, they say we don't worship them except that they may bring us closer to Allah. So Iblis made it fair seeming to them. They thought that what they do, were doing was correct. They said, you know what? Our ultimate aim is to come closer to Allah. But as for these pious people, they bring us closer to Allah. Likewise what we have today, the people they come and they say, these are our intercessors. These are our intercessors between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is exactly what the pagans of Quraysh did. And this is exactly how shaitan, he came to those pagans of Quraysh and he misled them away from Tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ هَاُولَاءِ شُفَعَاؤُنَا إِنْدَ اللَّهِ They worship that which neither harms them, nor does it profit them. And they say, these are our intercessors with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ya ikhwan, I bring this to you simply to say that Iblis has misled many before us. 
He has not been doing, this is not something new to him. He's been misleading generation after generation and coming to them and bringing them tools and bringing them traps that they fall into so that he can take them to the fire with him on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And he has various tools, Ya Ikhwan. If we see in today's day, we have those people who are the scientists and the evolutionists and the atheists. They place their own intellects and they begin to worship their own intellects. So if science can prove it, in, in inverted commas, science can prove it, I believe it. And then we have those people who believe that we evolved from apes, a'udhu billah. Then we have those people who are Hindus and they worship thousands of gods. We have the Christians, those who say Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salatu salam is the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they worship the trinity we have the Jews who say Uzair is the son of Allah so ya ikhwan Iblis has many different traps and one of the traps that he has come to with this ummah is many of the Sufis etc they make dua to the dead they call upon the dead and they take them as intercessors they take them as intermediaries between themselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yet Allah jalla wa ala calls this worship in the Quran yet this is exactly what the pagans of Quraysh did and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fought them and spilled their blood because they were disbelievers I want to focus on two things which are so uh, common in our society in our society, right here, right now, in Alam Rock, they are so common. In fact, all of the Muslims all over the world, perhaps nobody is free of this. And I want to talk about these two traps of shaitan, which can nullify a person's iman. I want to talk about sihr and the prevalence of magic within our communities. And I want to talk about ta'weed. I want to talk about amulets and the pre prevalence of amulets within our communities. Ya Ikhwan, magic is something which is well known. It's mentioned in the Qur'an in various different places within the Qur'an. And magic, it is a contract between the sahib, between the magician and one or more of the shayateen. And so what the magician does is he does actions of obedience, actions of worship, actions of submission to the shayateen. And as a result, they will do things in return for him. And magic is mentioned in many different places in the Qur'an. Magic was also performed on the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the Jewish man whose name was Labid ibn al-A'asam. Magic was performed on the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet we have people today who deny the reality of magic. And I want to mention just a couple of places within the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions magic. The first is in the 102nd ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. And the ayah begins, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُ الشَّيَاطِينُ وَعَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ I'm not going to read the whole ayah, because if there's somebody that's suffering with magic here, we don't want to cause them to have a reaction. And this ayah begins, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُ الشَّيَاطِينُ وَعَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ That they follow what the shayateen, they taught at the time of Sulaiman. So the Jews, they came and they said, Sulaiman alayhi salam, he used to practice magic. Sulaiman alayhi salam, he used to practice magic. So we are not disbelieving. We are only following the messenger, the prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. But in refuting them, Allah jalla wa ala, he says, وَمَا كَفَرَ Sulaiman, وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا But Sulaiman did not disbelieve. But the shayateen, they disbelieved. By learning from that magic or teaching that magic, that which they learned from the two angels, Harut and Marut. Now the question is, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down angels to teach the people magic? Because magic is something which is haram, it's kufr, it's disbelief. There's no good magic, there's no white magic, and there's no black magic. All of magic is disbelief and it's all one religion. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ حَتَّى يَقُولَ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ فِتْنَةٌ فَلَا تَكْفُرُ Those two angels, they never taught anybody this magic until they said, Look, we are a test. We are a trial. This knowledge which we are coming down with, it is a test and a trial. So don't disbelieve by learning this magic from us. If you learn it, we will teach you. But this is going to be an act of disbelief. So it was a trial. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He sent down this trial. وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions one of the purposes of magic. He says they learned from those two or those shayateen, that by which they seek to separate a man from his wife. Ya Ikhwan, perhaps there is not a family 
Perhaps there's not a family in our city except that somebody from amongst them is suffering from magic. Or they know somebody who is suffering from sihr. This is something which is so prevalent amongst our societies. As Shaykh Ibn Baz rahimahullah he mentioned, he said that as the Muslims, they become weaker in their iman, then the magicians, they begin to flourish. As the magicians, they flourish, again the people become weaker and weaker and weaker in iman. This is the role and the aim of the objective of the magician. He will do magic in order to try and gain fame, to try and gain fortune, to try and gain wealth, to try and gain recognition. Or he may just be an evil person who wants to mislead people away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ya ikhwan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in this same ayah, that they know that he who has any portion of magic, مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ He's not going to have any portion in the akhirah. وَلَبِئْسَ مَا شَرَوْ بِهِ أَنفُسَهُمْ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ What an evil price it is for that which they have sold their souls, if only they knew. Ya ikhwan, you practice magic, to learn magic, to teach magic, to have magic performed on somebody else, to pay for it, to promote it, whatever it is, all of it is disbelief which takes a person outside of the fold of Islam. And the scholars have spoken very clearly about this. The scholars have spoken very clearly about this. There are narrations from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam that the magician has to have his neck struck by the sword. That he needs to be put to death. And Shaykh Ibn Baz rahimahullah and others from amongst the contemporary scholars, they have mentioned that the magician, he should not be asked to repent. Because of the evil that he has created is so great. And there's so much evil, and he is such a lying, sinful individual, that if he is asked to repent, he'll likely just say, I repent, but his repentance isn't sincere. So they say, he should be killed, and he shouldn't be buried with the Muslims, and the funeral prayer should not be offered for him, and he should not uh, be shrouded, rather he should be buried with the kuffar. This is the seriousness of this issue, ya ikhwan. And yet today, perhaps there is a magician on every other street corner. Every other masjid, every other Darul Ulum is practicing sihr, ya ikhwan. Whether they know it, whether they tell you or whether they don't, they are indulged in this art, ya ikhwan. And another place where Allah Jalla wa Ala, He mentions sihr in the Quran, is in Surah Taha. Likewise in Surah Yunus, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what happened between Musa alayhi salam and the magicians of Pharaoh. Where Musa alayhi salam, he came to Fir'aun and he gave him clear signs, clear evidences. For example, he placed his hand inside of his coat and he raised it out and it was white like the sun. And he said, look, let the children of Israel go. I am a messenger to you from Allah. Pharaoh said, you are just a magician. And I have magicians like you. So they arranged a day for a competition. Pharaoh brought all of the best magicians in his kingdom. Musa alayhi salam came. And the magicians, they first threw down their ropes and their staffs and their sticks. And they made it look, they bewitched the eyes of the people. And the people thought that they were snakes. فَأَوْجَسَ فِي نَفْسِهِ خِيفَةً مُوسَى So Musa began to feel some fear, some apprehension in his heart. These are snakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْنَا لَا تَخَفْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى Don't worry, indeed you're going to be victorious. You're going to be uh, above them. You're going to be the uppermost. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, throw that which is in your right hand. Indeed, that which they have done is only clear magic. وَلَا يُفْلِحُ السَّاحِرُ حَيْثُ أَتَى And the magician will never ever be successful. It doesn't matter what level he reaches. Ya ikhwan, today we have people, you don't give your daughter to his son, what do they do? They go to a magician and they make sure that she never gets married again. But, it's extremely important. The first ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا هُمْ بِضَارِينَ بِهِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ They don't harm anybody by it except by the permission of Allah. Magic in and of itself, it can't harm you. Our aqeedah, our iman, is that whatever is written for me, it's going to happen. If Allah has written and allowed this magic to harm me, it's going to happen. But if Allah has not allowed this sihr to harm me, then it's not going to harm me. And I put my trust in Allah. And nothing can harm me except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. And so we find them today, they see a man and a woman and they are happily married. And the jealousy and the hatred and the envy in their heart leads them to go and disbelieve. And then get magic and try and break up this couple. They try and kill a person. If they see you successful in your business, they see that you have a nice house and a nice car. This hatred, this envy, this jealousy leads them to go and disbelieve and get magic performed over you. 
Ya ikhwan, these are from the traps of shaitan. And we need to counter and co- combat this within our societies. Because it's not going away anytime soon, ya ikhwan. So it's upon us to learn about it, to protect ourselves against it with the correct aqidah, by praying five times a day, by putting trust in Allah, by making those adhkar, which are mentioned in the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and be vigilant against it. And this is a massive topic and we can't delve into it too much right now due to a lack of time. But ya ikhwan, we see that shaitan, iblis, he has come to the people with this trap, this trap of magic. And the people, they think that they're doing something good. I want my daughter to marry him. So what do I do? I'll go and get a love spell cast. And I make him fall in love with my daughter. And I make him marry my daughter. Ya ikhwan, these are so common. This is so prevalent within our societies. Yet, having any portion of magic is disbelief. Is disbelief. Buying it, getting it done, or practicing it yourself, or learning it, or teaching it. All of this is disbelief, ya ikhwan. And you will have no portion in the hereafter. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from this sihr and to expose those people who are practicing magic. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the tawfiq to combat and clean at this uh, evil from our societies. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا. This is the first thing that I wanted to mention. As for the second thing which is so prevalent in among, amongst our community, amongst our people, is the prevalence of amulets, is the prevalence of da'weed. It's not uncommon now to come to the masjid and you see a brother with some a black thread around his neck, around his arm. It's not. Uh, it's not uncommon that we see our people walking around. Go to Alam Rock Road and perhaps every other person is going to have something around his neck. And he believes that this is going to protect him. And he believes that this is going to bring goodness towards him. And he believes that this is going to be a good thing for him in this life and in the akhirah. Ya ikhwan, let's look at some of the uh, authentic narrations from the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ten men came to give pledge, to pledge their a pledge of allegiance to the Messenger alayhi salatu salam. He accepted the pledge of allegiance from nine men. And he didn't accept it from one man. When he was asked sallallahu alayhi wa sallam why he didn't accept the pledge from that one man, he said he's wearing an amulet. He's wearing a taweez. And so the man, he took that taweez off and he broke it. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted the pledge of allegiance from him. And then the Messenger alayhi salam, he said, whoever wears an amulet faqad ashrat, then he has committed shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Why is this the case? Because the person puts it on, and he ascribes to this little black leather pouch, some form of authority, some form of power, some form of ability. And he thinks, this is going to protect me. He thinks this is going to bring me goodness in my life. This is going to ward off bad luck. How weak is our iman, that we hang something around our neck, and then we believe that this is going to have an effect on the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How weak is our iman, that we don't make dua to Allah, we don't turn back to Allah, we don't seek refuge in Allah, we don't even pray five times a day, yet we hang something around our neck, and we think this is going to protect my children, this is going to bring me good luck, this is going to protect me from evil eye. Ya ikhwan, how weak is our iman, that we leave that which is legislated, and we go towards the footsteps of shaitan. How much has shaitan misled us, that we leave the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we ascribe partners with him, jalla wa ala. Likewise, the, uh, the companion, Ruwayfi bin Thabit, rahimahu, uh, radiallahu an, he said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to me, and he said, Oh Ruwayfi, you may live for a long time, and so tell the people, tell the people that whoever ties up his beard and twists it, or he hangs an amulet, or he cleans himself with animal dungs or bones, then Muhammad has nothing to do with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever ties up his beard, whoever wears an amulet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is free of him. He has nothing to do with him. Ya ikhwan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us clearly in the Qur'an, وَإِن يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala touches you with some adversity, there is nobody who can remove it except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah jalla wa ala touches you with some harm or with some adversity, nobody can remove it except for Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِن يُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَ, فلا راد لِفَضْلِهِ and if he intends some good for you, then nobody can remove or nobody can prevent that which he intends subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Ya ikhwan, don't let these people, these peers, these uh, maulanas, don't let them mislead you. Don't let them tell you this is Qur'an. I tell you, I promise you, Wallahi, 99.9% .9 of the time it's not Qur'an. And the Qur'an is a shifa, yes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, honey is a shifa. Do you walk around with a can of honey around your neck? No, you need to use it. Take that honey the way the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dictates. Likewise, this Qur'an, use it the way the Messenger alayhi sallam used it. Use it the way the companions used it. Then it will be a shifa. Then it will be a rahma. Then it will be something which elevates you in the akhirah. Rather than being your cause of destruction and being the reason for you to be thrown into the fire of Jahannam rather than it being Ya Ikhwan a proof against us let's use this Quran in the correct way let's come back to Tawheed let's stay away from these traps of Shaitan it's upon us to take this message to those who are not here today many of our relatives they will be wearing Ta'weed he has a problem he has gets headaches he gets problems with his bones he can't she can't have children whatever it might be so they go and they tie up this thing around their neck and they begin to rely upon this and they do not rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shaitan has misled our people ya ikhwan we need to come back to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammad kama sallayta ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima innaka hamidun majid allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima innaka hamidun majid rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi alakhirati hasanatan wa qina athab al-nar rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab rabbana تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وأقيم الصلاة